I had to do this video yet again, so sorry about that. But in the first video, I had the Aboriginal Indian remains in Jamaica. I had that one. And as you see, it was cited in 1897. And it says Indians of the West Indies by James Edwin Durden. Now, in this second video, I'm talking about the Journal of the Institute of Jamaica. And this one was published in 1894. And as you see, it says one of these with a cranium of a Negro native Indian skull. This is found in Pedro Belif, now in the Institute of Jamaica, found at the same time. So as you see, it says books, Google Books. So then you'll be able to click on that and you'll be able to read it or download it or whatever the case. If you have the Google Reader or whatever it's called, so then that way you can go ahead and look at that, read that, and see for yourself what they're saying about the Aboriginals, the Arawaks of Jamaica or Zamaka. Okay? Algamation not only between free people of color and, and native people, there was an algamation also between between colonials. Mm -hmm. I mean, that happened. Matter of fact, that was one of the things that, that uh, William Byrd, who, uh, who was involved in the dividing line between Virginia and North Carolina, and uh, um, Alexandra Spotswood, was trying to algamate native people with other races to get rid of the, get rid of get the Indians. Of the yeah. Now, when you look at the Byrd papers, and you, you would read his diary on April the 7th, 1728. He actually visited our reservation in Jerusalem, Cortland, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And what's so interesting about that, he described how the people look. He said the young men came out and their faces were painted and they made all kinds of grotesque figures and they danced for him to the sound of a gore drum stretched tight with an animal skin. Then he said the young women came out and they were tall and shapely and dressed in their finery. Their hair was braided and they had, they had white and blue conch shells in their hair that hung like locks mm -hmm. and around their neck. And then they had wrapped around their body a match coat, which was red and blue, which is a shawl, mm -hmm. that fitted loosely about their body, that their mahogany skin shone through. Mm -hmm. Then he went on to say that these, these dark angels make exceptional wives for the English planters, and their dark skin would bleach out in two generations, unquote. That's a quote that he made. So that was the whole goal, people. was, was yeah. to, to try to, to bleach out, as they say. Yeah, but it kind of tells you that, that first mm -hmm. Americans were a rich brown people. Mm -hmm. they were. Okay, let's look at this. It says, Oxford Handbooks Online. It says, Intermarriage. And the creation of a new American. Okay. Now I'm going to skip down to where it talks about America. All right. It says here, it says among the earliest immigrants to the Americas, European colonizers, most notably the Spanish, the French, the British, intermarried with indigenous peoples and African slaves, relationships that shaped the successes and the character of their respective conquests. Historians of New France have depicted how French officials initially recommended the marriages of French traders and Indian women in the 17th century. Such liaisons would facilitate the economic exchanges and grow the population without the integration and cooperation of Indians. The sparsely settled French colony could not expand the fur trade and protect its settlements or assure military security. Indigenous peoples accepted miscegenation as a means of strengthening alliances and access to European goods. So French officials imagined that French men would necessarily educate their Indian wives and contribute to the reproduction of Frenchness in the new world. And we know it's not the new world. We know it's the old world. And it says, an assumption that betrayed French cultural patrilinealism. However, in practice, the influence flowed in the opposite direction. Amri Indians selected such merchandise, economic practices, and military tactics of the French, but in true French language and customs and laws. Frenchmen appeared to go savage, lost their French culture as they became members of their wives, families, and communities. Alarmed by such developments, French officials 
launched an ultimately futile effort in the second half of the 17th century to discourage intermarriages by importing French women from the metropole, drawn with the lower ranks of French society. These so-called fields de rue did not suit the fancy of Frenchmen, perhaps because the women could not offer the advantages of their Indian rivals, meaning our ancestors, right? Indian women. And it says, Sally Ha Belmessius has argued that the failure of the policy of assimilation through intermarriage helped create previously absent concept of race by the 18th century. French officials now criticize miscegenation and describe differences between French settlers and the Amory Indians in racialized terms. And this is in formulating these ideas, Goleman Al Albert suggests that the colonizers drew upon a, an, an applied metropolitan discourse about mixing intended to protect the racial purity of the French nobility to the French colonial population generally. Acceptance of intermarriage between French immigrants and Indians in New, in New France gave way to the intolerance as French notions of ethnicity were culturally became racial. Okay, now this is another um, source and it's called the journal article Indian Intermarriage and Message in Colonial Louisiana. And it says the William and Mary Quarterly. And it's talking about Catholicism, Native Americans, children, Indian slaves, intermarriage. Okay, so Indian intermarriage. It says here, in the 1790s, a K-Paul Indian woman called Mary Louise had two children with a voyager, independent trader named Michael Bonnet. Records reveal little else about this woman. Her K-Paul parents must have lived in one of their nation's towns along the Arkansas River, just west of the Mississippi. By the time of Mary Louise's birth, the K-Paul had suffered devastating population losses due to European diseases. They had also established strong ties of trade and alliance with the French who had founded the Arkansas Post of the Cape Paul lands. After the Seven Year War ended in 1763, the Spanish and British split the colony of the French Louisiana along the Mississippi River. The Cape Paul continued their good relationship with the French colonists who remained and formed new alliances with the Spanish and the French. Despite fuzzy details, Mary Louise's story seems familiar. An Indian woman married and had children with a French man who supplied goods to her people. Abundant scholarship has shown that in the western hinterlands of New France, Canada, many Indian women married European men, either in the Catholic Church or a la Fauchon de Pays, in the custom of the country. These marriages and the children born from them help to foster trading ties between peoples and establish and maintain the economic and diplomatic basis of New France. Given the pervasiveness of trade, marriage, trade marriages in the Canadian fur trade, scholars have assumed that voyagers and unlicensed traders in colonial Louisiana, many of whom were French Canadian. Okay, so that reminds me of Beyonce, for instance. Now, let's look at her story. It says, Beyonce, the Britain. It says, superstar Beyonce Knowles may be one of the biggest and most successful singers ever to come out of America, but her roots are well and truly French, a more precisely Breton, a, a French genealogical association claimed on Monday. She may not dance in the traditional style of a Briton woman, but Beyonce does indeed have Celtic roots, according to the French Genealogical Association Roots and Branches. The world-famous star, who is one of the most successful U.S. artists of all time, has her origins in the tiny island of Belle E. E. Mare, off the coast of region of Brittany in the west of France. According to the association, the 
the former Destiny's Child singer's great, 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 great grandmother was Marie Francoise Terran, a member of a family who fled Acadia, a French colony in present day Canada, and settled in the Morbihan region of Brittany in the late 18th century. Around a decade later, Terran is believed to have sailed from the west coast of France to the U.S. state of Louisiana, where she then met her husband, Joseph Beauchard. The great-granddaughter of the couple was Cecilene Ann, who is no other than Beyonce's mother. Okay, so that's what they say about her, but we know that, you know, Beyonce, she has said herself that she's mixed, and that we know that her mother is mixed with French. They consider her mother as a Creole. And we know that Creoles are really the American Indians, like, for instance, the uh, the Haitians are American Indians. They are from the Arawak peoples, okay? So, and they happen to speak, they speak in their own language, plus they know um, French as well. So, you know, but Beyonce also said that she's supposed to be part French, American Indian, and also African, uh, according to her family history. So this just goes to show that even with Beyonce, that it was a Frenchman who was living in New France and intermarried into her bloodline. And we know the reason why it was all about economics. It was about that they wanted to expand the fur trading business and obviously you know also get other natural resources as well and they knew that the only way that they could do that is by you know marrying an Indian woman and that they were complaining that the Frenchmen were taking on the so-called savage ways of the American Indians because he would join her family which was a custom for us as American Indians because we are matrilineal so, anyways, tell me what do you think about this information? I think that this information, personally, I find it to be very interesting. And it just goes to show that it was a whole um, objective or agenda behind them, you know, marrying into the American Indian bloodline. And even today, you know, that agenda is still there. So, anyway, I hope you like, share and subscribe to my channel.